God blessed the marriage. He gave us the internal strength to be to help us walking through with the marriage. This is what many people said. When they at the wedding, they look at the word get, they think that by attending a church wedding, by being there, the priest there, the minister is there. Now, this is a little sidetrack for those who know me. When I celebrate the uh, interreligious marriage, I always the non ask the non-Catholic party, do you want your minister to be part of the wedding ceremony? Tell him to come. I give him, him his number. I will, have a, I will give him a call, invite him to be there. I love doing that. I even said, do you want him to give the homily so I don't have to prepare one? I would be grateful for that as well. <laughs> uh, I don't have a problem with that. I do it all the time. So for those who non catholic if you want your minister to be part of the wedding, tell the priest. Okay? If it, your priest has a problem with that, you tell, you give me his number. I talk to him for you. I said, now, that's couple's right. You don't have the right to take away their right. That's your right. So, now they think that because they are at the wedding, they're in the church, they have the minister there, the priest there, their families there, the best man, the maid in honor, and everything in God's presence. So therefore, here they come and they get the sacrament. Right? We're going to give it to you guys, and you're going to take it home, and here we are, become a sacramental marriage. So I underlined the word to get. Eh, you wrong. You don't, get, you don't go there and get anything. You go there, you give yourself in a sacramental marriage. Two of you go there and give you yourself. You don't go there and get something from us, from the priest, of, from your partner. You give, go there to give yourself so that your marriage can be a sacramental marriage in the presence of God. Your marriage become a sacramental because God is there. So you give yourself into the marriage. You don't get something from the marriage. Talking about get and give, I tell you a story. Oh, I got a lot of stories to tell. Uh, some good, some not good. Uh, some even, they say, Father, that's not church appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> but I say, but that story, that true story, I, I don't make up story and tell. In your marriage, as you prepare, not, there's a lot of confrontation, right? And we don't like confrontation. We don't say like people disagree with us. I was sharing with the, the three couples who sat at my table today. Last night, I went to the lake. I came back pulling the 22 feet long pond too. Uh, right at the corner, Paul, Pauly, Paul, Pauly corner, oh, whatever that is, okay, there. They got a four-way stop sign with the blinking red light, okay? I go through that a lot. I know exactly what I'm doing. There's a gas station right in the corner, and there's always a cop sitting there. I know that. I go on that road. I know that. I'm at a stop, and then I'm at a left turn on Washington Road, onto Washington Road. And I see the light of the police car. Now, that's a long boat, plus there's nowhere on the side where you can pull the boat over. So I put on my emergency light and drive for about two, three miles before I can find somewhere to park. The police came up, checked out the tag of the, the trailer and the truck, and then he came up to me. I drove down the windows. He looked at me and he said, Father Martino, you ran through the, la the light. I said, what light? He said, you did not make a complete stop before you made a left. And I said, nah, I did. I know I did because I saw you standing right at the corner there. <laughs> he said, no, you did not. Father, I said, I thought I did. He said, well, Father, I wouldn't call you a liar, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you, you really did not stop. I said, OK, if you said so, the power is in your hand, I guess. <laughs> And he said, Father, you need to, to remember that that's a stoplight, okay? I said, I know that. <laughs> Isn't that happen in your marriage sometime? Many times we roll through the stop sign. We roll through the corner. And we thought we made a complete stop and think about it. 
That's why you hear this word can. I ask you to make a complete stop. Think about what you're entering into. And make another complete stop on the day of your marriage. I always check with the couple before the wedding begins. I walk into the groom's room and the bride's room. And they always say, well, Father, you shouldn't be in there. I said, for God said, I'm not in there alone. I'm good. <laughs> I always pray with them individually before I walk out there. We have the rehearsal before, the day before. But I always tell them on that day, the rehearsal is just for you to know basically what's going on. On that day of your marriage, I don't want you to even think about what's coming up next. I want you to sit there and hold his oldest hands and begin the dreaming of your life. Place yourselves in God's presence. Whatever come up next, I will tell you. I will lead you through the whole wedding. But I want you to be there and soak yourself in God's love and in his oldest love. That's your day. And we hear. If we not here to make your day better, then for those who hear and not make that sacramental marriage better, they should be home. I will be more than happy to send them home for you. <laughs> and uh, surprisingly, there are many weddings that couple will be smiling and laughing through the whole mass. But there are weddings that people couple are crying through the whole mass of happiness. And I said, Father, we never felt this way. I said, well, I don't know what you felt. Then we have to explain. Never went through what you are going through now. As I told you, right, I went through the, uh, for those who came here early, I, I was engaged. I went through everything except this part, you know. Didn't go to a marriage encounter with care. And, and that's what it is. So you go there that day not to get something from us. No one expected to get something from us, the priest, from all the people. But you go there and you give yourself into this marriage. Now, let's come to the main point. The sacrament of marriage. I'd like to make a comparison between a contract marriage versus a sacramental marriage. What the difference? Many of us wonder, and many of us may not understand what the difference. Well, if you can open your book, it's in there. I, I, uh, it's in there, it's on page six. Okay, the first one. Okay, the contract marriage is between a man and a woman. Of the sacramental marriage is the same, plus God is there. Okay, the second one is the law based, it's based on the law. And the other one is based on the love. I want to stress the point right here. There's many more things you can, you, you can read it right there. I, I normally, when I teach or when I share with people, I don't read everything in the book. Because I said people know how to read and write. They can read it. If I just repeat everything in there, then what I just give them the book. Let them go home. Study it and just give them the test. I don't have to spend the whole weekend here, especially the best are biting out there in Crot Hill Lake and down. <laughs> I could be out there. Right? I would spend the weekend with you and you should waste your time being here. <clears throat> I want to stress on this two words a little bit. 